first I want to introduce to you some of the tools that you're going to be using. You're going to use the bench hook again, but this time we're going to use it to roll out our inks. <clears throat> we're going to be using printer's ink, and most of the time it comes out of a canister like this. To get the ink out, you're going to use a palette knife, which sometimes is used for painting, but in this situation we're going to use it to get the ink out. And you want to use about the size of a pea. Uh, and if you splat it, you look at it to be about a nickel size. Okay, and just park your palette knife on the lid so that when you need it again, it will be in a safe place. And this is called a brayer. It is not the same as a roller. Its core is hard rubber, and so it only will roll on the surface. A roller is porous and it will go into the different surfaces. It's usually fuzzy. A brayer is hard rubber. Our purpose for rolling out on the bench hook is not to cover the bench hook, but what you want to do is you want to cover the entire surface of the brayer evenly. So I'm going back and forth, and the point is that I want this brayer to have ink even all over it. And I'm almost there. It's almost even. Okay, I take it. Here is my stamp. I'm going to roll ink on it. Put my brayer back in the ink. And now I'm going to walk over to my table, my name and room number on the back of my paper, and I'm going to start printmaking. For the purpose of the video, I'm going to print make right here at the same station, but you will need to go back to your table to print because there won't be enough room for everyone to be at the stations. That way, when you roll out, somebody else can come and roll the ink. First block I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out in a block print which means I'm going to print it in rows. There are going to be rows and columns that are straight. Every time you print, you need to load your block with ink. It's not necessary to pound on your block. You just need to push on the back gently, even pressure. And so for the block print, I need to fill the whole page in rows and columns. So as you see, part of it might print off of the page. That's okay. And I'm filling up the whole entire page. So as you can see, I have a little bit more to go. Line it up with my other block, print it, go load it up with ink again, print it, load it up with ink again, and my last block. Then I'm going to put this on the drying rack, go to my art folder, take out another piece of paper. I'm now ready to work on the drop block print. And so got my new piece of paper at my table. If you wish to change block colors, what you do is you take your block, go to the sink, wash it, dry it, and then you can go to another station for another color. To save time, I'm just going to stick with the red. So drop block means that I'm going to print one row starting at the corner, just like I did before. This looks very similar to the way I did it before for block. But the difference with drop block is I am now going to drop the next row. Okay, so instead of lining it up on the top, I'm going right in the middle of the two other blocks. So I've dropped it down half. Some people might say this looks like a zigzag because I've got high low rows. Okay, now my next row, I'm starting to get ghost prints, it's called, when it gets kind of light. So I'm going to add a little more ink. You don't want to use a lot of ink on your brayer, or it won't really roll. Hear this nice sound? 
That's how I can tell it's really nicely applied to my brayer. So now I'm going back to the first row. So I'm going to line it up on the top of the page. And I'm going to print this row. So this is Drop Block is the name of this pattern. You're going to be printing four different layouts. Okay, so there's my Drop Block pattern. High, low, high. Put that on the drying rack. Go back to my art folder, get another piece of my paper. Bring it back. The next one I'm working on is random. That means you can do whatever you want with your block layout. For mine, I think I'm going to do some diagonal right across the page. You can do whatever you want for random. It's up to you, your layout. So here's my random print. I chose to go on a diagonal. Put that on the drying rack. Time for my fourth sheet. Okay, my fourth sheet is going to be um, a little trickier. It is called checkerboard. So I will start out with one color. Right now I'm starting out with the red again. And I start out in the corner. Now for checkerboard, the next thing I need to do is I need to skip a space. So I hold my space for one block and then I put the next one. And I drop it down. If this is too tricky for you. You can always wash your block and then do the in-between color. It takes a lot more time though. Now I need to switch colors because checkerboard has two colors involved. So get rid of my reds. I'm going to wash my block. Go to another bench hook. I'm going to go for green this time. Get a new palette knife. Scoop out a little bit. Remember, not too much. A lot is not what you want. You want just about a pea size. Park your palette knife on the lid. Roll your brayer back and forth. Remember I talked about sound. Did you notice how loud it was when it was a big blob? And now it sounds smoother. Okay, I'm going to roll it out on my block. Sometimes your block doesn't come totally clean looking because it stains it. Okay, now it's green. And I'm going to fill in the blocks in between. We're going to use the small drying rack today so that our projects don't fall through. Here's my checkerboard and on your um, assignment it said you needed five prints. All right, so here's checkerboard. And my very last one, you're just doing a print in the middle of the page. Boom. And you're done. Good luck.